uh, again, uh, the Org WebLogic server runs on all the major platforms. It runs on Unix, it runs on Linux. Oracle is obviously going to support all of these products on Solaris if you choose to go there. Uh, all the different versions of Linux that are out there, Windows. So all the different platforms are out there. Plus, what we just talked about, how people access the information is supported across the board. Whether they're running on a Windows PC, they're running on a Linux PC, they're running on an iPad. You can get information you have formatted for each one of those different environments relatively easily. Scalability. We can cluster these middleware servers together. It gives us both uh, scalability and high availability. So the WebLogic server, very easy to cluster together. Uh, it's really a trivial process to go out there and it allows us to expand what they call horizontal. So I can go through and say, okay, now I need two servers because I'm anticipating uh, 50 users on here, but I want to grow it to 500 simultaneous users, 5,000 simultaneous users. I can scale out relatively easily. All of this technology is very applicable to the cloud also, where I can set this up in the Oracle cloud. Or has anybody experimented with uh, EC2 from Amazon? Really cool functionality. Amazon provides a, a, a lot of different uh, flexibility options for you to go out there and say, okay, I want to pay $100 a month and I have this much computing power. Okay, I know that I run a seasonal business. Uh, I run a toy store and I know that October, November, December, my client list is going to go up. I want to be able to scale out there and in January scale back down again. Amazon EC2 allows, EC2 allows you to do that. Oracle Cloud allows you to do all of those really cool things also. But this middleware technology is really what we're going to use to enable that kind of functionality. So when your business does start growing, you can have that type of flexibility. High availability, obviously if I cluster four or five of these middleware components together, one of them crashes for whatever reason, I never want to have a situation where poor customers can't get information, they can't do orders inside my organization, people inside my organization can get the information they need. Real easy to do and to get high availability. Uh, we talked about some of the different cloud things that are out there. Does everybody understand the concept of service-oriented architecture? That is such a huge thing we're going to be moving forward, even for you guys who aren't using the e-business suite. For those of you who are using the e-business suite, you're really going to have to, have to learn uh, web services and service-oriented architecture technologies. But the starting point for so many people is, you know, I just can't get my hands around it, I just sort of can't understand what's going on. You can think of SOA as two major things. It's a set of standards, a whole bunch of different standards that are out there. And for developers, it's really a lot of work. They're going to have to understand a lot of the different standards that go along with that. And it's a philosophy. It's a philosophy about how you develop applications inside your organization. The whole point of service-oriented architecture is that you think about the different business processes that you do on a regular basis and you try to break them into little discrete chunks of code and you try to turn those that those little discrete chunks of code into a black box as much as possible. Everybody knows what I'm talking about when I say black box, right? It's real something that you just put out there, you expose it on the internet and it takes input, it does some kind of magic, spits out some kind of, uh, some, some kind of output. The example I always use is, you know, in a typical organization, you have accounts payable, accounts receivable, purchase orders, inventory, you have all of those traditional things that you do. One of the things that you do probably is do credit checks, right? You have some kind of credit check where you check on a customer, you check on a vendor, how much credit am I going to extend to this particular person? If you can turn that little piece of code into a web service and say, okay, here's the input, it's either the vendor ID or the social security number of an individual who I want to uh, do a credit check on. The, the code does some magic, whether it's internal business rules or maybe it goes out to a credit agency, pulls back information and says, okay, based on this vendor ID or the social security number, I am going to extend $6,000 worth of credit to this particular person. And it spits back, okay, the credit is approved and use the amount. If I can turn that little piece of code into a web service, I have a whole bunch of advantages, right? One of the advantages is I don't have to have that code in all my different applications all over the place. I have this one piece of code that if the business rules change for whatever reason, maybe I want to change the rules around Christmas time and say, you know what, I would normally give $6,000 worth of credit. I want to extend it to $10,000 worth of credit because it's Christmas time and I have to do all of these different things. Once I have all of that stuff inside this little piece of code, I can then interface with all my different applications. Anytime an application needs to do a credit check, I don't have to have something in my account system, I don't have to have something in my inventory system, a little piece of code here. I've, I've in, encapsulated it in one piece. It also makes it easier to debug, and it makes it easier for me to set up business rules. What I was talking about uh, a second ago was all of the standards 
was the reason that web services are as popular as they are is that it doesn't matter what development language you develop them in, it doesn't matter what application server you apply them in, all of the different um, uh, ways in the, in the past of having true distributed computing had a whole bunch of drawbacks, right? Does everybody remember the bad old Corba days? Does everybody know what Corba stands for? Common Object Business, Common Object Business Request Model. Uh, uh, there was uh, DCOM or uh, uh, Microsoft came up with distributed computing uh, object model. There were all of these different tools that allowed us to say, okay, let's kind of distribute the process between all of these different pieces and we'll share it. Well, there was a whole bunch of different uh, issues that went along with that. One of the issues was complexity. Uh, one of the issues was um, uh, it, it wasn't standardized, so some of them were tied to specific programming languages. Uh, uh, security and firewalls uh, and a lot of the core components that uh, people developed out there they couldn't really be distributed amongst different applications uh, because there were a whole bunch of firewall issues that had its own protocol web services is 100% based on standards so any modern programming language can generate web services where they can be exposed on the internet through a web browser or uh, through a web server or consumed relatively easily so if you're a Microsoft programmer writing in C Sharp, if you're a Java programmer using Eclipse or uh, Microsoft uh, uh, Oracle J developer, you can develop web services relatively easy, have them exposed inside your organization, and then start using all of those business services relatively easily. Integration, right? Once we have all of this uh, uh, little pieces of code that can interface, and again, we don't care about where they were actually developed or how they were developed, it makes integrating different systems relatively easy, right? I might have some of my accounting information stored in a SQL Server database, and I write a web service that's exposing it through IIS, Microsoft IIS, and I want to also integrate that with an Oracle-based database where I have a web service that I developed in JDeveloper. It's relatively easy to integrate those different pieces together. That's a huge benefit for organizations who say, okay, I know I have all of the information in my organization, I just want to be able to get at it and have it be a consistent interface. Maybe I'll have a Java front-end application that uses all these web services. Maybe I can use something simple like Oracle Application Express, which can uh, consume web services. The new version of Apex, by the way, can also create web services. It's a really exciting thing. Oracle is going to uh, announce the 4.2 version of Application Express for anybody who's interested. But I can integrate all of these different pieces relatively easily. I don't have to have proprietary solutions to say, okay, I got this SAP thing here, I got this e-business suite here, I got some stuff stored in uh, Microsoft SQL Server database. I want to be able to get about all this information. If I expose all those things through web services, I can integrate them real easy. Middleware is an absolutely essential component of that. Middleware is where we're actually going to write the code that's going to store, that's going to expose these different business services for us. All major uh, uh, middleware pieces, uh, middleware application servers support this technology. Obviously, Oracle WebLogic uh, it, it supports all of these different features, and there's a whole bunch of management features that go along with it, so that when you start developing all of these web services, you can manage them relatively easily. All this really boils down to the business people, the bean counters inside the organization. What do they want? They want agility. They want to be able to change their processes relatively quickly. Again, imagine if you had that little piece of credit check code inside a traditional client server type environment where it's kind of all over the place. You might have a little piece over here in your accounting system. You might have something here in your point of sale system where you do some credit checks. And the business says, okay, I need to change the rules. I need to figure out how do we grant more credit or we have to cut back because we have too many people who are defaulting on their credit. If in a traditional environment, right, I have to go all over the place, I have to go through business unit testing, I have to do all of these different things, how does it integrate? If I was able to turn that into a web service and I have that in one location inside my organization, I know exactly where to go. I know exactly right here, I gotta change the business rules around, I gotta make it more strict, I gotta make it more lenient, I gotta figure that out. I test it, I can do a unit test because it's this little black box. I can deploy it to my web server real easy. I don't have to generate all the different pieces of code that goes along with unit testing and system testing and integration testing. I can do all of those things relatively easily. Boom, get it out there and provide the business with agility. That's what people are really striving for. So the Oracle Web Logic Server offers choice in development frameworks and tooling. It is a J2 or a JEE environment, the Oracle Web Logic Server. 
you're not limited to using the tools that are provided